So we'll start with just an extended demo of a bunch of different aspects of Python, which relate to programming languages in general. And they're going to cover names, assignment statements, and user-defined functions. Here we go. OK, I've started up Python, version 3.3. Any version of Python 3 is fine. And the first thing we'll talk about is names. The names refer to values, and there are built-in names, and then names that you can create on the fly. So to access built-in names, you use import statements. So from math import pi. Math is called a module, and it's a collection of all the different things that Python knows about math, like trigonometric functions and important constants. So now, once I've written this import statement, the name pi will refer to this hopefully familiar value 3.141592653535, etc. And I can evaluate that name. A name is an expression. Python will tell me the value. I can also use that name as part of a larger expression. So I can multiply by 71 and divide by 223 and pi will stand for 3.1415, etc., in that larger expression. So one way to bind names to values is by importing them from modules that are built into Python's standard library. Another way is through an assignment statement. This lets us bind names to values ourselves. So I can say the radius is 10. This is an assignment statement which has names on the left, an equal sign, and then expressions on the right. And the names on the left are bound to the values of the expressions on the right. So now I have a radius, which is 10. Uh, I can use that name in combination expressions, just like I did the built-in name pi, but two times the radius is 20. And uh, in Python, assignment statements are quite flexible, so I can put multiple names on the left and multiple expressions on the right. So I can say, for instance, the area of some circle and the circumference of that circle are respectively pi times the radius times the radius, oh. or the circumference is 2 times pi times the radius. OK. Upon executing this assignment statement, I've now bound both the names area, the 314, and circ the circumference of 62. So this allowed us to establish bindings between arbitrary names that we come up with and some values that we compute by evaluating various expressions. Now, functions are also values, not just numbers. So the name max is bound to a built-in function that takes the maximum of multiple arguments. It's hard to print out what a function looks like, because a function is this abstract thing that does computation, returns values. And so what Python does is it gives us this stand-in, which in angled brackets writes something about the description of max. So max is a name. It refers to this built-in function max, which we write down in this way. OK, so with uh, the max function, I can take the max of two numbers, and I'll get the larger one back as the value of that call expression. Now, I can bind other names to that same max function value. So I can say f is max. Now f is the built-in max function. And f of 3 and 4 is 4. I'm going to shrink this just a bit. OK, so what have I done? Well, I've just given another name to the same thing that was already there. The built-in max function, there's only one of those, but it now has two names. We can refer to it as max, and we can refer to it as f. The assignment statement evaluated the name max, which evaluated to this function, and then bound the name f to that function as well. OK, interesting thing. I can also rebind built-in names like max. So I can say max is 7. Now what's max? It's 7. What happens if I try to take the max of 3 and 4, just as I did before? I'll get an error. This error 
Well, look at the last line of the error first. It tells you what's going on. Is a type error. It says int object is not callable. Now, what does that mean? Well, we'll know more about what that means in coming weeks. But basically, what happens is that you tried to use an integer seven as the function in a call expression, which you're not allowed to do. The operator portion of a call expression, which comes before parentheses, needs to evaluate to a function that gets called on the arguments three and four. Max is seven. It's not the built-in function max anymore because I assigned it to something else. Okay, interestingly, I can still take f of three and four and get max because f is still bound to the max function. So we haven't lost it entirely because way back up here, we gave the max function another name, f, which we can still use. So we can even say f of three and max and we'll get back. Okay, so now we have two different ways of binding names to values, import statements and also assignment statements. There is another way as well. Um, so here's an import statement that binds the names add, oh, import, add and, that binds the names add and mol to their respective built-in functions which do things like multiply together numbers. Now in addition to these import statements and the assignment statements you saw, I can also define new functions with the def statement. So a def statement looks like this, def square x return mol xx. Okay, so this is our first multi-line statement. This is all one big statement. It's called a def statement because it starts with def we're defining a function square. It has a formal parameter x, which is going to be used as the name that refers to the input of the function. It has a body, which is everything that's indented after the first line. And the body in this case is a return statement where the return expression is mol xx. Mol is gonna to refer to this built-in function mol and x is going to refer to whatever is the input to the function. Okay, so now I have something called square, which is a function that I defined. Ignore this part. I can use square to square things. So what's the square of three? It's nine. I can also use it in combinations. So what's the square of the result of adding together two and five? It's 49. I can even use it multiple times in the same call expression. So the square of three is nine, the square of nine is 81. In addition, I can define other functions that might rely on square. So let's say I want a function that takes the sum of the squares of two numbers, x and y. So what is this gonna look like? Well, it's going to return the value of adding together the square of x with the square of y. Now notice that when I was defining this function sum squares, I was interchangeably using some built-in names and some names that I defined. I defined the square function just up here, and that's fine. So the programming language doesn't need to know which of these are built-in and which of these are things that I created along the way. It just works. So the sum of the squares of three and four, three squared is nine, four squared is 16, adding those together gives me a total of 25. I can sum squares of five and 12, and I'll get 13 squared is 169. Okay, let's see if we can figure out what's going on with all these examples. So we'll switch back to the slide. There are many different types of expressions that we've been looking at. There are primitive expressions, such as numbers, or sometimes they're called numerals, like two. Names, add is a name. There are also strings. I showed you a bit of that in the last lecture. So these are things with quotes around them, and they just, uh, they represent text. You'll see them a little bit in your project. Okay, we're also very interested in call expressions, which call functions on arguments, Here's one max two three. 
the operator is the expression that comes before the parentheses, operands come within parentheses, separated by commas, and you can have combined call expressions where, for instance, an operand is also a call expression. You can do arbitrary nesting and make these uh, larger computations via those expressions. Okay. The hero of today's story will be the name. We really care about how names work and we're going to learn all about it in the rest of the lecture. So, here's a question for you. Based on everything you've seen so far, what do you think happens when we evaluate the last expression in this series? What is the value of the final expression when I start out my Python interpreter from scratch? I say f equals min, I say f equals max, I say gh is min max, I say max is g, and then I say max f of 2, g h of 1 and 5, and 3, and 4 as the other argument to max. Here are your options. It's either 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. So before going on, try to figure this out for yourself based on what I've told you about how assignment statements work. And then we'll look at the answer in more detail. 